on, gentlemen. Get a move on. You guys all right? More than all right. This... You... We did it! <laughs> all the embers we could ever want, and it's all thanks to you. Very, uh, heartwarming. But maybe we can just, you know, grab what we came here for and get out before any more of those things decide to show up. Now, now, shard counter. Nothing wrong with a little remnant. Though we should probably let our flame-haired friend get going. I believe she has business down here, does she not? Right, of course. You need any help? I can handle it from here. Very well. Well, we'll start taking some of the embers upstairs. Holler if you need us. Thanks. Should be somewhere beyond the store. Time to bring it home. Oh, well, we're not worried about running out. Poseidon should be hiding in some kind of processor. I need to find a console to gain access to it. I can't do it. I can't give up on this place. I'm leaving everything on standby. The system's equipped for runs for decades, if not hundreds of years. It's a long shot, but... Maybe someday, against all odds, someone will find this place again. Marvel at his lights and wonders. Discover a fortune and boundless opportunity. Make it their own dream. After all, if the city can give me a second chance, if water can flow in the wasteland, anything is possible. I'm here to bring you home, Poseidon. To Gaia. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Poseidon's subordinate function to original code. Back to Gaia. System reboot initiated. Looks like taking Poseidon triggered a restart of the city's power system. Mom and crew must have headed back up top. Probably not as they could carry it, but.
like that elevator I found earlier. Maybe I can catch a ride instead of climbing back up. Looks like that elevator I found earlier. Maybe I can catch a ride instead of climbing back up. Whatever she did, it must have powered up the whole city. <laughs> oh. oh, the show my old gramps always wanted. There's another. <laughs> His dream realized. As old Gramps' legacy ensured, our hero beheld the sea of desert lights and wept at his good fortune. When I saw the Embers as a child, I never dreamed it could be like this. Thank you, Aloy. Well, did you find what you were looking for? I did. And now I have to move on. Oh. Oh. Come back when you can. I got big plans for this place. I thought you wanted to put on shows with the Embers back in the claim. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the show. Oh, can you imagine? Folks from all over the land coming to take it all in. Plus, some food and a nice place to stay. Not to mention a variety of entertainment venues. Uh, don't forget, games of chance. Plenty of shards to be had there for certain. <laughs> A new dream, huh? I, um, I hope you make it happen. Goodbye, gentlemen. This delve was a story for the ages. All thanks to you. If Moreland and crew is gonna stay, maybe I should come back and check on them later. For now, I need to get Poseidon back to Gaia. But I might want to find that Osiron camp first, see if Talana made it. And with my new diving mask, I can swim as deep as I need to. Like at those deep water sites I found earlier. As his latest adventure faded into legend, the old wordsmith contemplated the next chapter in his storied career. Would the wordsmith take up residence in the ancient city of lights, spinning tales for all who came to listen? Perhaps the wordsmith would have a theater, all his own, seating hundreds with a stage made of the finest mahogany. And the old wordsmith might have a dressing room full of silks and puffy cushions with a brass tub to soak his weary feet. Fans might visit the wordsmith in his dressing room after shows and even blow him kisses, should they be of the feminine persuasion. As his latest adventure faded into legend, the old wordsmith contemplated the next chapter in his storied career. Oh, my old Grams would have watched these lights for hours on end. Perhaps the wordsmith would have a theater, all his own, seating hundreds with a stage made of the finest mahogany. By the forge, the old ones left behind some marvels.
Stemmer's already working on his recounting of our exploits. It's titled, Delvers of the Lost Embers. As his latest adventure faded oh, my into old legend, Gramps would have watched these the old wordsmith contemplated the next. A lot of shards to get this place up and running. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. Okay, data modules in. Come downstairs. Beta has something you need to hear. Okay. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. Hey, Gaia. It's me. Hello, Aloy. 
Did you wish to continue our discussion? The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Pharaoh. Pharaoh, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot at recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. Correct. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes. And to program their behavioral routines. Or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines. Attack the Zeniths and take them out. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth. Human life above all. So yes. Once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the Far Zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. According to my data, however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. How did you figure out that the extinction signal came from Sirius? The key came with data on your focus, from Silence interrogation of Hades. The duration of the signal itself, 17.22 years. Oh, that doesn't make sense. You said that the signal took 8.6 years to arrive from Sirius. Why would the signal keep transmitting after it was received and you blew yourself up? Because the sender didn't know that had happened until it received notice from Hades. Which would take another 8.6 years to get back. Correct. Only then would the sender stop broadcasting, after a total of 17.22 years. So the duration, halved, gave me the distance the signal traveled. With that in mind, I simply scanned my astronomical database for any relevant location 8.6 light-years away. 
Because it was Farzina's intended destination, Sirius was the only logical source. So from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, Every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zenith know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. The Zeniths. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. Do you know anything about them? Unfortunately, no. My personal database is limited to those who worked on Zero Dawn. Additionally, it appears Far Zenith was quite secretive about their members. Only one, Oswald Dalgard, was ever publicly known. Right. He was the spokesperson, back at their old launch facility. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences... ...is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth... ...they must be stopped. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. ...further supporting our hypothesis. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago... ...wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. ...their own personal playground. When I dove down into Vegas... ...I found data about the man who built the dome over the city. Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? The Zeniths, at their core, have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still... ...what he achieved... ...water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just... ...waiting for someone to come along and wake it up.
So there's a few people here now, and they're learning. All about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene, to allow him to process this on his own terms. I'll be off. Farewell, for now. Aloy, you're back. Is something on your mind? Maybe. It's about the Tanakh rebels and the Osirm. Really? Well, that doesn't sound good. Well, let me know how I can help. I discovered an Osirm militant group. They call themselves the Sons of Prometheus. It looks like they're the ones overriding machines for the Tanakh rebels. I thought there was something only you could do. They're familiar with ancient tech, and they're as anti-Karja as it gets. So, last year we stopped Durval and his cronies from blowing up Meridian in retribution for the Red Raids. And now you're telling me we have another group of Asaram trying to wipe out the Karja with, with an army of machines and bloodthirsty Tanakh? Pretty much. Oh, well, that's just great! Is there any way you can help me find out who they are? Anything to track them down and stop them? Yeah, I can send out some messages from Chainscrape. Get in touch with my contacts in the claim, see what I can find out. I'd appreciate that. I see you've got strike set up. Mind if I have a go at it? Really? Uh, sure. Now let's do it. Here goes nothing. I'm done.
my turn. Let's see what you got. Time to make a move. You're up. How did that even happen? It's out. Okay, I could do this. And they're gone. There it goes. That one's a goner. Let's see. Your turn. should I do? All yours. My turn. Off the board they go. That one's a goner. What should I do? And it's out. All yours. Well, that could have gone better, but uh, congrats on your win, though. That was fun. Oh, and I'll let you know if I find out anything more about the Sons of Prometheus. Same here.
I was wondering when you'd be back. I should get going. May you unearth that which you... S Looks like Gaia was able to unlock that door.